All right, everybody, welcome back. For another deep dive, you ready to talk some AI? Always ready to dive in. So today we are talking about really the future of AI and mm -hmm. work, um, and specifically looking at NVIDIA CEO Jensen Huang's kind of crazy vision for AI assistance. Yeah. And, you know, we talk about AI assistance all the time, right? Yeah. But he doesn't just see them as these helpful tools. Right. Like, he really thinks they could be a whole workforce, which, yeah. I mean, I don't know, it's, it's an interesting thought. Mm -hmm. And get this, he actually said that he imagines NVIDIA having 100 million of them. Yeah, that's a pretty crazy prediction. I know. But it really speaks to this growing belief we're seeing that AI isn't just, you know, a tool for individual tasks. It could actually be this massive, scalable workforce. Yeah. That really does change how we think about productivity in all sorts of industries, right? Sure. Yeah. And, you know, I feel like he's not just saying this off the cuff. You know, he actually compared, like, NVIDIA's trajectory with their AI to, like, these huge companies like Apple and Microsoft, which I thought was really interesting. Right. Like, he clearly sees AI assistance as this key part of reaching that same level of, like, influence and impact, you know? Yeah. But I think where I really start to get tripped up is what would all these AI assistants even be doing all day long? Right, right. Well, this is what Huang described, which I think is fascinating. He's basically saying these would be, like, digital colleagues, hmm. right? So they're not replacing us, but they're taking on the tasks that, like, we all hate doing. Like, yeah. like the repetitive stuff. Okay, give me an example. Like, data entry. Data entry. Oh, my gosh, yes. Scheduling, generating reports, all of that stuff that's essential, but it takes up so much time, and it doesn't necessarily need, like, that human spark of creativity. Lovely, totally. I could use an AI assistant for that, for You're sure. Right. Oh, yeah. So it frees us up to actually do the thinking work. Oh, that's a good point. Okay. Yeah. So I did think it was interesting that he even talked about AI assistants, like, participating in, you know, like, Slack channels. Yeah. Like, I can't even imagine. Is that, like, an AI scanning your messages for tasks and then, like, updating project management tools? Or, like, I don't even know. Right. It's like they're not separate. They're, like woven into how the company functions. Right, exactly. And he's not just talking about like the engineering department or something. He's talking about this across NVIDIA suits, cybersecurity, chip design, like all this stuff. It really seems like the possibilities are pretty much endless when you think about how many different applications there are for that. It, it really highlights how adaptable and versatile AI can be. But, you know, we can't talk about this without talking about the big question, which is what happens to our jobs, right? Right, yeah. Because if we have a workforce of 100 million AI, are we all out of work? Exactly. Exactly. Because I feel like that's what we hear all the time is like, robots are going to steal our jobs, right? <laughs> right. And, you know, it's interesting because Huang's take is actually that AI will create jobs, not just take them away. Really? Create a jobs house? Oh, yeah. yeah. His logic is that if you have these AI assistants boosting productivity to this crazy degree, right? Companies become more profitable. Right. Okay. And so then they have the resources to expand into new areas, new products, new markets. Oh, that's an interesting way to think about it. Right. So they're going to need more people, not fewer. Okay. That makes sense. So it's not just about like AI versus humans. It's about this fundamental shift in how we work. So we kind of have to change the way we even think about work then. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, Huang was clear that humans would still be essential for the things that AI, at least for now, can't do, right? Like, we're still the ones identifying the problems, setting the goals, making those high-level decisions. Right. So we're not totally obsolete. It's more like AI is augmenting what we can do. Exactly. It's a collaboration. Okay. I like that. Right. So it's a collaboration. Yeah. I mean, but I guess that makes me wonder then, like, what skills do we need to be really good at, you know, to thrive in that kind of collaborative environment? I mean, what does that even look like? Working yeah. with AI like that. Right. That's the million, well, in this case, $100 million question, right? Right. It's not just about knowing how to use a specific AI tool. It's about those uniquely human skills. So, like, creativity, critical thinking, complex problem solving. Those are things that, at least for now, are really difficult for AI to replicate. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. Well, I think it's safe to say that Jensen Huang's vision is definitely a bold one. And it definitely leaves us with a lot more questions than answers. For sure. Um, but we want to hear from you. What do you find most interesting about this whole idea of AI assistance mm -hmm. as colleagues? Do you think this is something that could actually benefit your field? And if so, how? Let us know.